a.m. Police say a business nearby saw flames and called 911. No one was hurt. The home has some smoke damage. Traffic was slowed for a brief period. The Texas Supreme Court ruled today ERCOT, the operator of the state's power grid, is a government entity granting the organization immunity to lawsuits stemming from the deadly winter storm in 2021. The Supreme Court ruled 5-4 to four on immunity, reversing a previous judgment from a Dallas state appeals court. Justices dismissed lawsuits from San Antonio's municipal electricity utility and a private energy developer. ERCOT is the country's sole power grid contained wholly within a single state. It encompasses roughly 75% of the state and maintains a grid providing electricity to 90% of Texas population. Texans are asked to conserve their energy due to the high demand for power next week. Friday, ERCOT issued a weather watch starting this Sunday and running to next Friday. The state's grid operator said this is due to high temperatures and anticipated electrical demand. ERCOT asks consumers to monitor ERCOT grid condition updates, plan ahead to reduce energy use during higher demand periods, and view supply and demand six-day forecast. And now let's take a first look at your forecast. Here's First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Scott Pitney. And I know on your forecast, Scott, I'm not giving anything away. <laughs> You're forecasting more heat. Well, you don't have to be a meteorologist, Don, to know that it is very <laughs> hot outside. We do have excessive heat warnings in effect right now for our far southwestern counties in the crossroads. Elsewhere, the most of the crossroads under a heat advisory until 9 o'clock tonight. That continues to 8 o'clock tomorrow. Triple digits all next week. No rain in sight. I'll have all the details coming up in your forecast. Don? Scott, thank you. Lavanca County Sheriff Micah Harmon has joined a group of sheriffs nationwide formed by Republican presidential candidate Ron DeSantis. Goliad County Sheriff Roy Boyd, not among the officials nationwide to the DeSantis coalition created to combat crime stemming from the migrants crossing the border with Mexico. Sheriff Boyd told us he has been talking with the DeSantis team, giving to them border operations information. As far as not joining this coalition, Sheriff Boyd told us, quote, I'm not a political animal, I'm a cop, unquote. Governor Abbott signed House Bill 2127 on June 13th, which aims to remove patchwork local ordinances around the state. The law goes into effect September 1st and would put an end to safeguards, such as the ordinance the city of Austin passed in 2020 that requires rest and water breaks on construction sites for at least 10 minutes every four hours. Here's your viewer poll tonight. Do you agree with Governor Abbott's move to end the requirement to give water breaks on construction sites? Yes or no? Let's look at those numbers. 6% of the voters say yes and 94% say no. We thank you for voting. We want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part. We'll have an update on what you and your neighbors are saying on 25 News Now at 10. A Texas real estate developer at the center of Attorney General Ken Paxton's impeachment pleading not guilty to charges of making false statements to banks that loaned him more than $170 million. KXAS reports Nate Paul waived his scheduled arraignment before a U.S. District Judge today in Austin. Paul figures heavily in 20 articles of impeachment filed against Paxton, who was accused of abusing his power and bribery in order to help Paul. There is no reference to Paxton in Paul's indictment. Thursday night, every single senior at Marlin High School finally received their diplomas. One month before, only five students were set to graduate. Cheers of excitement as all 38 Marlin High School seniors walked to the stage to receive their diplomas Thursday night. It was a great feeling instead of just a couple of, a couple of us graduating, you know, we got everybody, you know, together to graduate and it was a great feeling to do it with my class. It's a feat that didn't seem possible a month ago. In an audit on May 23rd, the district announced just five seniors were eligible to graduate based on issues regarding grades and attendance. Working with the TEA superintendent, Dr. Daryl Henson pushed back graduation so more students could become eligible. Our job is to be educators and to not be punitive. And that we have to provide more students with opportunities to show success and demonstrate completion 
then a Marlin ISD, that's what we're going to do. But this wasn't met without frustration from parents and students. Some who say they had no idea of their children's ineligibility until just days beforehand. For this to have happened six days after the last day of school, it is bittersweet for him. And so as his parents and his family, we're just here to keep him, you know, lifted up and and uh, mentally healthy and emotionally healthy because we just want uh, we just want what uh, what is right. Brandilyn Jones's son, Prayer, was the senior class president and a decorated student athlete. But despite his high GPA and active involvement at school, he was also one of the initially ineligible to graduate. But now, walking across the stage with all his peers, Prayer Jones. Prayer says this feeling is even more bittersweet than he could have imagined. We've been we've been through so much, and it's just. It kind of kind of brings us closer and being through so, being through all this that's happening is bringing us closer. And as he heads off to the University of Louisiana at Lafayette to throw shot put, high school diploma in hand, there's one thing he's learned from this situation. It kind of opened my eyes to being more in independent and being more vocal and advocating for myself and not only myself, but for other people and just believing in what's right. In Marlin, Chantal Rob, KWTX News 10. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Then you will catch Crossroads Today on YouTube. Stay with us coming up on 25 News Now at 6. A Houston area home almost split in half when a tree falls on it. Also ahead, an update to the investigation in the Rust movie set shooting that resulted in the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Here's a look at what's coming up on Community Crossroads this week. We hear from the YMCA of the Golden Crescent. We also learn about Aranza's passages. We also hear from the Goliad Main Street program and we hear a performance by Carissa Winters. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. Oh, oh, oh. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. An update now to the investigation in the Rust movie set shooting that resulted in the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. The film's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, now facing additional charges of tampering with evidence. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, the armorer on the set of the Alec Baldwin film Rust, facing an additional charge tonight. Gutierrez Reed is already facing an involuntary manslaughter charge after cinematographer Helena Hutchins was shot and killed on the film set with a prop gun. Now she's accused of tampering with evidence. In a new court filing, New Mexico prosecutors alleging that after authorities began responding to the set, Gutierrez Reed transferred narcotics to another person with the intent to prevent the apprehension, prosecution, or conviction of herself. I'm the armor, or at least I was. 
In April, prosecutors dropped the manslaughter charges against actor Alec Baldwin, who held the weapon that killed Hutchins. Baldwin had always denied pulling the trigger, and when he was charged, pleaded not guilty. I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. Gutierrez reads attorney saying the new charge came with no prior notice or any witness statements, lab reports or evidence to support it. This comes on the heels of the state letting its lead investigator go and the investigator raising serious concerns about the investigation in an email. In that email, the outgoing lead investigator for the prosecution told his bosses the sheriff's conduct of the investigation was, quote, reprehensible and unprofessional. Neither the sheriff's office nor prosecutors responded for comment regarding those claims. Melissa Don, ABC News, Los Angeles. A Fort Worth police cadet and two firefighters were injured from a nearby lightning strike at a training facility as storms moved across North Texas this morning. One Fort Worth police cadet was taken to the hospital out of caution and is doing well. The firefighters were assessed at their station and returned to duty. After one of the Wednesday storms, one family in a suburb of Houston is just lucky to be alive after a massive tree crashed through the middle of their house. Here's another look from above, Air 11 capturing the full magnitude of the damage. I talked to the homeowner who asked to remain anonymous, but agreed to share the terrifying experience. He says he was in his backyard last night when he first noticed the storm clouds rolling in and the winds picking up. He says instincts told him he needed to move his family to the back of the house and into his daughter's first floor bedroom. That's where he, along with his wife and his two and four year old girls were and his mother-in-law upstairs in her bedroom when the giant pine tree smashed through their home, nearly splitting it in half. It's a crack and a boom, you know, and you can feel the house shake from the tree falling on it. It's, it's heartbreaking. I've cried all day. Uh, because we worked hard to put this house together. You know, we worked hard to, to get it where it is now. You know, I, we take care of it. And this was, you know, a place where we can call home. Yeah, your heart just goes out to this family. Video from inside the home that we got shows debris everywhere. The frame of the house splintered into pieces. The homeowner says seconds after the tree crashed through their home, he grabbed his family, ran out of the house and into their truck and drove away, scared the house would collapse on them. He says rain then drenched the entire inside, destroying everything, including his two little girls' hearing devices. Both his daughters, he says, suffer from hearing loss. This two-story home is one of the hardest hit homes here in the Spring Branch subdivision in spring, but other parts of the neighborhood dealing with storm damage this afternoon as well. Yard after yard, we saw uprooted trees, some toppled onto cars, as well as down power lines blocking streets. Residents still without power hours later after losing it last night. The homeowner said despite everything, they're grateful to be alive. They do have insurance, he said, so they plan to rebuild. Mm, scary stuff right there. Current feels like temperature in Victoria, 105 degrees. I've got the rest of your weekend forecast coming up next. Stay with us.
And welcome back. Taking another look at that heat advisory. Most of the crossroads under a heat advisory tonight until 9 o'clock. That is tomorrow, uh, only till 8 o'clock tomorrow. But a few counties, as I said, in excessive heat down there in the pink shaded area. Either way you look at it, it's very hot right now. Mostly 90s have one station, or actually two now, Sea Drift at 88, Rockport at 89, Quero at 94, and Port Lavaca at 93 degrees. Those feels like temperatures, everyone in the triple digits, the hotter spot, Gonzales at 113, Refurio 107, Port Lavaca 108, and Quero at 106, feels like temperatures. The reason for that is this high pressure system moved off to the west. It weakened the atmosphere a little bit, which gave us those Wednesday storms, but now it's back. It's actually going to be moving, drifting toward the east. We still have that dry line out in West Texas firing off storms, but you have to go pretty far north to get to rain for us. No rain in sight. Here's Friday at 9 o'clock. That high pressure continues to drift over toward the crossroads. This is tomorrow morning at 10. Not a cloud in the sky, really, but as we get to tomorrow evening, we might see some more storms again firing off North Texas Hill Country area, but eventually that high will move across Texas and park over Shreveport. And when it does, it might bring some southwest wind back in with that clockwise circulation around the high, which will bring a little bit drier air, but honestly, it's not going to make that that much of a difference when the temperatures are as hot as they are. Quick update on the tropics. We have tropical storm Cindy now at 50 miles per hour. Cindy is going to continue drifting off to the northwest and eventually make a turn to the north. It's running into a hostile environment as far as tropical storm growth, and so it'll eventually become a low. If it affects any landmass at all, it may affect Bermuda toward next week, and then we have Brett. Brett will also move into a hostile environment here in the Caribbean and will eventually become low as far past the Leeward Islands. Still a tropical storm with winds right now at 50 miles per hour. For us closer to home, here's the marine forecast for tomorrow. If you're heading offshore, mid 80s for your temperature. Winds out of the south around 14, 15 miles per hour. That is for tomorrow morning. And as we get to Sunday morning, not much of a difference. Those temperatures bumping up maybe a little bit, but those winds still staying around 14, 15 miles per hour. That's onshore and inshore. Closer to shore, water temperature right now, Port O'Connor, 86 degrees. High tide, 128 p.m. Low tide, 120 a.m. Wind south 10 to 15, seas 2 to 3 feet, and those bay waters slightly choppy. This evening around 8 or 9 o'clock, we'll see about 80 degrees. Southeast wind at 10 miles per hour under partly cloudy skies. And then for overnight, not dropping to much, only down to 79. Those winds dropping a little bit to 10 miles per hour. Skies will be cloudy and maybe some patchy fog in the morning, especially along the coast. For tomorrow, 98 degrees, that's ambient temperature. Southeast winds at 15. Skies will be mostly sunny. Port Lavaca, a good place to be by the water. Those temperatures at least a lot, down a little bit around 94 degrees. You move inland to Quero, temperatures up a little bit at 98. But for the rest of the crossroads, 100 degrees all the way through the week. Plenty of sunshine, those low temperatures only down to the mid to upper 70s. Of course, you can download the Crossroads app today. Get the latest news, weather, and sports at your fingertips. Plus, sign up for email alerts, and it's free. Don. All right, Scott, thank you. Sports Director Gino Perez is here to tell us that it is never, never too early to talk about Texas high school football. I mean, the two biggest things in Texas are God and football. So, I mean, oh. yeah, it's just about time for that season. We're about 62 days out. We see where they're ranked after the break.
Out at Crossroads, the Victoria West Lady Warriors softball team will be getting a new head coach for the upcoming softball season. The one taking the reins is Zoe Miranda. She has 17 years of softball playing experience at a college in UHV here in Victoria and also Navarro in Corsicana. While being a Jaguar, she was on the team that made it to the World Series a few years ago. On the coaching front, this is going to be her first year as a head coach, but she was an assistant at Midwestern State for several years. The 24-year-old said she is excited about this opportunity because she has always wanted to be a coach. Her goals are to develop talent early on, starting in middle school with camps and also to become the most successful program ever at West High School. Well, we are 62 days away from the Texas high school football season and the Texas Bible, also known as Dave Campbell's Texas football preseason rankings are out and multiple teams are making the list. The top ranked team in the Crossroads area is from Class 2A Division 1 and that's the Refrio Bobcats. The orange and black are coming off a state final appearance where it would just fall short of winning its sixth title. Also ranked in Class 2A Division 1 are the Shiner Comanches at number 9 followed by Ganado at number 21. In Class 3A Division 1, last season state semifinalist Edna Cowboys are ranked number three in the state. Cowboys head coach Jimmy Mitchell was named as Coach of the Year in Class 3A last season as well. The Goliad Tigers just make the list coming in at 19. And in Class 3A Division 2, the sole crossroads team ranked in the area is the Tidehaven Tigers making the top five at number four also making it to the state regional finals last year. Moving up to Class 4A Division 1, the El Campo Ricebirds land at number 12 in the state. The Ricebirds lost the top back in the nation in Reuben Owens, who is now in Aggieland. And head coach Chad Worrell as well is leaving. Taking the helm is the former Cuero State champion, Travis Reeve. The Calhoun Sand Crabs find itself at number 16. Round one of the NBA draft is in the books, or excuse me, the NBA draft is in the books and the Texas teams have their top selections. The San Antonio Spurs had the top pick in the draft, selecting seven foot four inch Victor Wimbanyama. The Houston Rockets had the fourth pick and took Eamon Thompson. The Houston Rockets had yet another pick in the first round via the Los Angeles Clippers at 20 and they would take Villanova's Ken Whitmore. The Dallas Mavericks at 12 took Derek Lively the second out of Duke and at 24 they took Oliver Maxson Prosper and we want your opinion if you had to choose who had a better draft between the Mavs, Spurs or the Rockets. Go to our website crossroadstoday.com to vote. And lastly the Houston Astros are heading to California to take on its rivals the LA Dodgers for game one of a three game series. These two ball clubs are very familiar with each other and there's a lot of bad blood between them. Both teams have 41 wins on the season, and this is a late game starting tonight at 9-10. Well, that's your sports. Don, back to you. Hey, Gino, for your viewer poll, I have the answer. The team that had the best NBA draft, the University of Houston Cougars. We oh, have two <laughs> players picked in the first round for the first time in 39 years and for only the third time in the program's history. So that's really nice. Go there you go. All right. Thank you, Gino. We're back in a moment. This next story is really cheesy, but it truly is really sharp and pretty good.
saying cheese, cheese. The Ellsworth Cheese Curd Festival gets underway today for the 22nd year. The Cheese Curd Capital of Wisconsin will be celebrating one of Wisconsin's favorite delicacies. The festival on Friday and Saturday will include over 15 cheese curd vendors, cheese curd tasting events, and even a cheese curd eating contest. Each year, the Ellsworth Cheese Curd Festival features a signature cheese curd. This year, it's Nacho Supremo, yum. <laughs> but we realize for some viewers, this story may, you know, not nacho style. But uh, we really enjoyed it. I tell you, it's a lot of, uh, I, I adore it. What was the over or under on how many times you were going to say cheese curd? Uh, cheese curd? I had about seven, I think. Oh, okay. Because yeah. uh, it, it is the cheese curd festival. I think the over hit, but. Only, yeah. Only Don. We, well, we need to get some cheese curd sent to yeah. us. Yeah. Well, if you have any cheese outside this weekend, <laughs> it'll melt, uh, at least if it stays in the sun. We are in for a hot one, folks. I wish I had some better news for you. I will say that, you know, it's a good week to wash the car. It's a good week to um, be by the pool. And other than that, it's up to you. But if you do have, seriously, if you have any outdoor activities tomorrow, get them done before 10 because it's going to be hot. 98 for your high, the heat index well above 100 all through the week. Those temperatures, those triple digits, that's ambient temperatures. Plenty of sunshine, but no rain in sight. Low temperatures, mid to upper 70s for the rest of the week. Hydrate, wear light clothing, wear some sunscreen. Absolutely. Pace yourself. Don't stay out there too long if you have to. Absolutely. Right. Stay on the AC. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tonight for 25 News Now at 10. Have a good one, everybody.